so apologies if this is a little bit ropey um i've never seen this it's very, very difficult to find um anywhere so i decided to uh make a wee video while i was doing it um, and we're looking at replacing this bit here on the end of an xt it's pretty much the same as a slx um, and, that, and the other shimano parts it's obviously obviously you've got to get the, exactly the right part to get in there but um this one's knackered um the one down there is the one i'm actually going to work on but this one here i'm um the one i'm going to work on then uh, i was changing pads put uh, new pads in but there was too much oil in the system so when i pulled the levers uh <laughs> it basically squirted oil through here so everything i've read suggests that there is um there's a diaphragm in there and that i've ruptured the diaphragm now the brake seems to be working fine but um but it's on the big bike and i kind of want the brakes to work when it was, um, when i pull the levers so um so what i've done is i've ordered a new diaphragm and this is about this wee video is about changing that diaphragm um and let's hopefully it works otherwise well you probably won't see this video if it doesn't work because there's no point in showing you they're not working but that's that's the bit i'm going for uh, this is the brake that i am going to change and this is the part that i've got um off of the internet and uh let's see what we can do first up what i've got are these three things so it's the end bit which squirted at me um this thing here which is actually bendy rubber uh, and that'll be that'll be our diaphragm and this tiny little grub screw um so what the video is about is figuring out how on earth that goes into there and stops it squirting oil out the wrong end because that is not where the oil is supposed to squirt out from it's supposed to squirt out of that end so let's see what happens now okay so i apologize i'm filming this on a phone and the lighting's not perfect but i'm just going to manual zoom so you can see i'm going into the lever and you can see in here that's that's the end of that's the lever mechanism there so you can see if i move the lever that's the lever mechanism there and what you may be able to see i'm going to point out when it was moving there i need a third hand but this bit down here just here there's a little hole and in there there is a grub screw and that's the only grub screw that goes anywhere near this end cap so that's the that there is the grub screw in there it's hidden in there that's the one that holds the end cap on and that's what we're going to run screw that's why we have a spare one here it's because it's the only place a grub screw can go in just inside the lever body and you see i am sorry about the shadows not enough hands i'm just removing the grub screw now from just within the lever let's see if i can change the angle and get it I'll just leave that in there that's the grub screw just coming out so you can see it heads into the chamber okay so there's going to be plenty of uh, fl fluid in there because that's basically the that's another port into the uh, into the piston chamber but that's what we're taking out now and that should release the end cap you might be able to see there there's a bit of a gap there in here now there's a bit of a gap um, and that is because um, with the grub screw gone there's just enough space to get a Stanley knife through into there um, and to prise that out now I have heard read that actually folks have actually gone through the end hole and, and threaded it and put an M M5 screw into there to pull it out it's definitely a, a, an option um, I've not opted for that um, I've got a complete spare so I don't need the old one so I just need to get that one out um, and uh, then should be able to slot the other one straight in uh, in its place and then grub screw it down so uh, so yeah there'll be a little bit of damage but it doesn't matter too much because uh, I've got the spare so I'm going to prise that out now I'll need both hands for that so uh, I'll show you it when I've done so I've, I've moved on a little bit further now 
um, and I'm just going to swap hands because uh, what I've been able to do is I've actually been able to use a, uh, a screwdriver in there and prise it off with a screwdriver and it's coming out pretty easily. Um, so, so, well, the next but next shot will be it popped out, I guess. We live in hope, can't we, eh? There we go. So that's it, that's the end cup out. And now we're looking into the master cylinder. There's lots of air in there. <laughs> so it's definitely gonna need a good bleed, but that's the, the end cap gone from the master cylinder. And you can actually see, if it's not too blurry, the thread heading towards the lever there from the grub screw. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the, uh, put the new bladder in there, make sure it's aligned right so there's a flat spot on it, um, and uh, just push it back in again. So if you're a little bit nervous about doing this, um, as I was when I started, then uh, that's cool. So I'm just going to show you piece by piece. These are the two bits. So I've got the uh, the grub screw at the end. Sorry, the grub screw. I've got the end cap there. Um, and as you can see, if I lift it up and put it in the light, that it has got a sloped end to it. There we go. And that sloped end matches the slope on the bladder there. So I'm just going to actually just push fits over the top. Um, and then it's going to be impossible for, for me to show you the flat spot, but there is a flat spot around the edge there somewhere. And yeah, that's not going to be, that's not going to go. Um, I, there's going to be a flat spot, flat spot on there. Um, and uh, that will, that will, will put, line that up with the grub screw. I'll just see if you can see that. You can see, it's not in focus, but you can see there's just a straight hole through there. So actually what's happening is... We've got all the oil in the, the master cylinder there. It's being compressed by the lever there, creating a load of pressure which goes down the hose. This sits inside and it expand and contract a little bit, uh, but basically it's a it's a it's a flattened tube, an unsealed tube, and that goes in the end. Oh, so what happens is that will get properly compressed. By the pressure of the lever in there, so it gives it a little bit of um, a little bit of give. Um, but there's one or two things will happen um, because this is a push fit on the end here. One or two things happens: either that gets ruptured and it squirts straight out of that hole I just showed you, or you produce so much pressure in there that it will actually go around the outside of this inside the bladder and then squirt out the hole so it's not necessarily terminal and that's a bit of an unfortunate thing it's not necessarily terminal if you get oil coming out of the end because it may have just gone around the outside but it's probably better to swap it out with a new one just in case i've had a quick look at the old one and i can't find a hole in it um, but uh, i'll do that later anyway let's get this stuck on so you can see the bleed port on the top there so just orientating it what we're going to do is i've literally just I'll swap hands again I've literally just popped the bladder over the top of the end with this two slopey bits matched with each other and what I'm going to do is then slide this in and you can see that the open cut bit is at the bottom so it's the way this is orientated that open cut bit is as furthest away from the bleed port because that's a screw going through there Okay, so this is the opposite side of the cylinder from the bleed port, and that's the right way to orientate it. So it's most protected from from the bleed port itself, just in case you you uh, so it doesn't rub up against the the bottom of the screw in the uh, in the ch in the chamber. Uh, and all I'm going to do is squarely, I'm just going to push this back inside again. And that's it just pushed in and if I turn it to the side you'll see there's a there is a little gap there but um, that's that's it fully in, inserted and the only thing I need now to do is to put the grub screw in and screw that right in to hold that in place and then we are sorted so we've we've avoided doing a full disassemble and the lighting's not really helping me show you this hopefully there so inside the lever housing there is, there's two plastic bits and one of the plastic bits actually partly covers the port for the grub screw. So what I've had, had to do is to wedge a screwdriver under it as a wedge to lift it up and give me enough space to be able to get the grub screw in. You'll find it yourself when you get up to this stage. 
but yeah it's a bit of a bugger it won't go back in again unless you lift that piece of plastic out of the way there we go so that's that's what the uh, screwdriver is doing in there it's well wedged in i'm not holding it at all so it needed a little bit of modification to of the uh, that bit of plastic it was just covering it it came out fine but actually to get it in at the right angle and not risk it cross threading which would be a bad thing um, i ended up just cutting a little semicircle out of it so that uh, the grub screw will, will went through it at the right angle so I could screw it in. And that's the end kept held on with that grub screw. So the only thing left to do now is to recharge the system with, uh, well, clean it up, which I've just done, and then uh, recharge the system with, uh, with oil. And then we're away. Fantastic. Hope this was really helpful. Um, <laughs> sorry about the quality. This isn't normally what the kind of film I would do, but I just couldn't find it anywhere else. Um, so hopefully this is helpful and hopefully you'll, you'll end up with a break that you may have thrown away um, that you can now fix and go ahead with and save yourself um, well, a lot of recycling, a lot of waste and uh, a bit of money as well. Good luck.